Welcome to DBL. Okay, this is a hot button issue, a very sensitive topic. We have talked about it, in fact, on this show before. There is a documentary and it is out all about Nickelodeon. It's Investigation Discoveries, Quiet on Set, docu-series. It's about the, quote, dark side of kids TV. And in the first few seconds of the first episode, former Double Dare host Mark Summers is featured talking about the network. Now, Mark is making headlines today because he says that the documentary producers tricked him and pulled a bait and switch. So here to set the record straight, we've got the one and only Mark Summers. Great yes. to see you, Mark. Man. Thank you. How's it going over there in uh, your neck of the woods? It's going well over here. You know, I was shocked to see your name splashed all over these tabloids. I mean, this is a documentary that's that's exposing abuse, and it's supposed to be a good thing, and then your name gets dragged into it. Um, I would be angry. How did your name get dragged into this very powerful documentary, and why do you believe that they pulled this bait and switch on you? Talk, talk to us. First of all, this is about kids who were um, supposedly damaged in some form or fashion uh, 15, 17 years ago when they were working at Nickelodeon. So the focus should be on them, not on Mark Summers, who had nothing to do with any of it. So let's remind ourselves that this has been going on in the entertainment industry back to Shirley Temple, but it's not good news when that happens. What I find mysterious is if these things were going on, there were camera guys, there were audio people, there were lighting people, why didn't anybody say anything? The way I got involved was I got a phone call saying they were doing a documentary on Nickelodeon. Um, if they would have said to me, we're doing this documentary uh, about this guy who was a producer and did terrible things to kids, I would have never shown up. They never said that to me. So I show up and uh, I have not seen this documentary. And I guess the first 10 seconds of it is me talking about how great Nickelodeon was back in the day. Then they said, oh, take a look at this and handed me a cell phone or an iPad, I forget. And they showed me something that was absolutely disgusting that a kid should not have been doing or seeing uh, at any time, even today. And so I said, you know, what the hell's going on here? And I said, let's stop tape right now. And um, it upset me that, you know, back in the day when 60 Minutes would have a, a Dan Rather or a Mike Wallace, it was all about truth. And now it's all about gotcha journalism. And so instead of being honest with me, uh, they did pull a bait and switch. And, you know, they wanted to get my reaction. And what did I think about this stuff? I never met Dan Schneider. I was not even at Nickelodeon when those shows were going on. Double Dare ran from 86 to 94. We got canceled. Those people came in and took our facilities. So I actually have nothing to do with this. And the fact that there's so much commotion about, you know, the bait and switch is, is silly. We should be concentrating uh, on what happened to these kids. And maybe there should be a further investigation either by Nickelodeon or somebody else. Mark, I appreciate you coming on and saying your piece like you did, because that is, you're right, it's all about the gotcha today, and I'm glad we have an outlet that you could clear your name here. But you spoke with a producer from the documentary yesterday. What did they have to say about that? Um, basically, they, uh, you know, did a little backstepping and said, well, have you seen it? If you watched it, you would feel different about it. Feel different about what? Did the fact that you lied to me? Uh, that's, that's not you know, what, what this is about. And this is such a minuscule thing to even be discussing, but, you know, just own up to the fact that you did gotcha journalism on me instead of saying, well, just watch it. Have you seen it? I I'll never watch it. I could care less about it. It doesn't pertain to me. It didn't pertain to anything I did back in the Nick days. Um, and so they're getting a lot of promotion, a lot of publicity. And I'm sort of, you know, sad that I'm now part of that whole situation. I was on Elvis Duran's radio show in New York and got asked the question, and, and talked about it. The next next thing I know, it's on, you know, TMZ and Variety Magazine and Entertainment Weekly and People and on and on and on. It's about the kids. It's not about me. Yeah, it, it's so weird that we're talking. Uh, obviously, first of all, full disclosure, you and I are friends off camera, and I saw the, the TMZ clip, and I was hoping that we'd get a chance to talk to you, and here you are. But you said something when you first came on that uh, resonated, and I actually experienced, because I watched these shows with my son during the pandemic, and I was like, this is very strange and off-putting. And you said, you know, there were cameramen, there were people walking around, we're asking the kids, why didn't they do anything? What did they do? We're asking old producers. There, was, there were dozens of adults 
And I feel like instead of having you here, we should be talking to some of them. Because if I saw just what on my TV screen that I was texting my castmates about in real time taking screenshots of the television, like what is this nonsense on my TV right now? There were other adults that should have uh, seen the same, seen the same, and I'm sure they did. And they need to be called to the carpet much more than Mark Summers. Right. And you have nothing <laughs> to do with this. And, and the other thing is, uh, from what I was told in an article that I read, that the parents were not allowed in the studio when the kids were being videotaped. Uh, it kind of makes me scratch my head. As a kid, I, uh, as a parent, I'd say, I, I just would like to be sitting there just to see what's going on. Yeah. And somehow they kept the parents out. So I read it in an article. Once again, not there, don't really know. That's what I read. Absolutely. Well, uh, let's get to my question. This documentary is all about the dark, the quote, dark side of kids TV. But I'm curious, uh, I think I'll know the answer. But what was your experience at Nickelodeon? It was fantastic. Yeah. I was there in the early days. Uh, certainly Double Dare put me on the map and put Nickelodeon on the map. Geraldine Laybourne was the uh, president. She was fantastic. Our whole crew uh, from Jeffrey Darby to Mike Klinghoffer and on and on. We just had fun. Um, with the kids, and by the way, uh, the kids were uh, key, and they were always uh, looked at, respected at, um, and, and made to be the stars of our program. And, uh, you know, this was, oh God, when was it? Uh, 1986. So it goes back almost 40 years ago, but yet their heads were on straight enough to know that, you know, the kids are the stars, and, you know, you just got to look after them. So what happened after that uh, with the whole new management team? I don't know. I wasn't there, but you know, here we are talking about this silliness of, of me being ambushed when we should do a further investigation about what really happened to these kid actors. Well said. Thank you for saying that. Um, this is fresh off the press. The Quiet On Set directors just told Variety Mart, quote, we are clear with each participant about the nature of our projects. This is your turn again to set the record straight because they just responded. Were they clear with Once you? Again. If they would have called me up and said, we're doing a documentary on Dan Schneider and talking about some abuse that supposedly happened to kids, would you like to be a part of it? I would have said no. Those words were never, ever said to me. Dan's name was never mentioned. They never mentioned anything about what the topic of this thing is. You know, uh, they can say whatever they want. I guess we can play your word against mine, but it was my life. Um, that's why I walked out. Those words you never said. The video that I saw was atrocious and, you know, if they want to play the same game, they can do it as long as they want. But uh, it's, it's, from my perspective, 100% not true. So, Mark, let's switch gears a bit here, or a lot, because we're <laughs> going to talk about something that you are involved in. Last, uh, last time you were here, you were talking about your off-Broadway show in New York, The Life and Slimes of Mark Summers. So how is the show going? It's unbelievable. It's uh, the best thing that's ever happened in my career. I'm just having the best time ever. Uh, we're at a place called New World uh, Stages in uh, New York City at 50th and 8th. Uh, we have a fantastic theater. People are coming and loving it. Uh, the weird thing is we haven't gotten one bad review, which never happens. In the and uh, I'm just having a ball. I walk down Times Square and there are uh, gigantic uh, billboards of me, uh, even on trash cans. There are pictures of Mark Summers saying, come to see the life in slimes. And you know, the other thing we talk a lot about, um, my life and overcoming obstacles, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, cancer, and uh, people come uh, after the show and relate to this. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of tears and a lot of conversations about people who can relate to the topic that I'm discussing. And so we're putting some positivity in the world as opposed to some of the other stuff that we've recently uh, discussed. Amen. Good for you, Mark. We appreciate you coming on here. And I hope those producers listen, because at the end of the day, if you're not, you know, being forthright to your participants, it'll come back and haunt you. And now it's taking away from the message of that documentary. Absolutely. Which to Mark's point. The internet has changed everything. And uh, if you want to compare them to real journalists, they couldn't carry Mike Wallace's jockstrap. There you go. There you go. DBL Nation, if you're in the New York area, you got to go check out Mark's show. Yes. Visit lifeandslimes.com for tickets. Thank you again, Mark. We Thanks. appreciate you.